In 2008, fighting game genre saw a resurgence once Street Fighter IV made its way onto arcades and home consoles the year after. This bold Capcom initiated move would soon have a ton of other publishers and developers stepping up their game and releasing their own entry. Also, the fighting game competitive scene went big. I mean, really, really big, with top names like Daigo and Justin Wong defending their claim, while new fighters like Punk and Arslan Ash carving a high level path for themselves. All this, the tournaments, the plethora of fighting games, and even some titles coming back for relevance sake, would not be possible were it not for one man whose passion for the genre knows no bounds, Yoshinori Ono. Previously, he worked as a music producer and composer since 1993 on titles like Saturday Night Slam Masters, Rockman Battle and Chase, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike and its rap score, Spawn in a Demon's Hand, and many, many more. You could tell he had that drive to bring back fighting games to its former 90s glory, with his failed attempt via Capcom Fighting Jam, where he was the producer. Yeah, that game had quite a history in development turmoils, but he persevered and bided his time until 2008 when it was the right moment to count to four. And history was made. On Capcom's side, it has its many ups and quite a number of downs. Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Marvel vs Capcom Infinite, Capcom Pro Tour's eventual Rocky Bits, Street Fighter V's botched launch. There are a number of videos out there I can point to that showcases Capcom's decline in fighting game quality and its questionable output rate. But still, when it's all said and done, he did his best. After almost 30 years, he recently announced his departure from the company. In a recent Twitter statement, he first acknowledged criticism leveled at a Capcom Pro Tour and the move to online matches. To quote, it took a long time for us to decide the format for this year, but we believe that conducting the event itself would repay those who has, sick, been supporting the CPT, regardless of what format it is. After that, he announced his plans to leave Capcom. So far, there's no official announcement on who his successor will be. There are rumours, of course, involving Street Fighter VI and its delay. But again, take those with a grain of salt. Fighting games never really had that infectious kind of passion and spirit that Ono brings to the table because he has that prevalence and appearance since 2008 onwards as a producer. It's always good to have a hype man of sorts going forward. But at the same time, it's clear as day that Capcom's fighting game division needed new management. From a personal perspective, yeah, it was really cool having Yoshinori Ono as the guy, the frontman, the big producer, that icon to champion Street Fighter 4 from start all the way to finish. Sure, like I mentioned before, there were all these other crazy bits that happened from Street Fighter 5, Marvel's Capcom and all that. But honestly, without him starting Street Fighter 4, getting it out there in the arcades and having all the other iterations, I don't think I would have been into fighting games as much. I remember last time I played a lot of Street Fighter Turbo, Super Turbo, Darkstalkers, a lot of Capcom games, and hell, even Mortal Kombat 2, 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, the original Killer Instinct when it was all CGI and shit. Uh, Fighters History Dynamite, I played that a lot, and even some weird non-fighting games with also versus game capacity bits like ADK's Twinkle Star Sprites, which I champion that until the day I die. That's an awesome game, you should play that. Now, without that 2008 and 2009 resurgence, especially when I was working in Singapore in Game Access and Hardware Zone, I don't think I would have met the cool people from Singapore, you know, who are trying to bring up fighting games, like, not just from the Street Fighter side, but also the KOF, King of Fighters side. Because I think around those few years, KOF 13 made its debut. There was also Soul Calibur 4, and then 5 coming in. Also Tekken 6, Bloodline Rebellion, the PS3, Xbox 360 versions. And that was a really cool community I met up there. Like uh, guys from Tian Lang, uh, Cameraman Z as well from Taiwan, America. As a commentator, even did some here and there. Even some cool guys from Saudi Arabia coming down just for Southeast Asia majors. Yeah, that was like the building blocks of stuff happening. There was still some drama, of course, but what fighting game community doesn't have drama? The important thing is, at least Singapore and to an extent Malaysia kind of built it up to be what it is, especially with the versus Asia stuff and the tournaments you see nowadays. Yes, I am. I have to stepped away since 2000. 14, 15, I did some my fair share of 
commentary and even in the interview Yoshinori Ono at one point. I think it was something to do with Street Fighter 4 or Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I say what you want about the game and I have probably in a future video. But damn, that intro, that hype, that all those cutscenes and the music video and that Black Tide Honest Eye songs. Still one of the best fighting game intros and ways to bring that hype in, period. Yeah, it's really cool. And then the game came out, ugh, what are we gonna do, right? I had that really cool history, you know, knowing all these people, working with them, you know, writing articles about them when I was in Game Access, and even pushing some guys like Sien and Gat when I was at GameSpot. Yeah, I'm telling you this right now, I... I mean, sure, I'm not the only person who helped bring them up. I mean, I know guys like Len and Retro DNA, Versus City, Cameraman, and a few others who actually brought these tournament players up to Zian's eventual win in 2014 EVO. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, ob I'm not an integral part, but I'm part of that too. And I don't want people to deny that because I, whatever I wrote, whatever shows we did with Zian as well on GameSpot and everything else, yeah, I think I. It's just my way of giving back after what I've loved about finding games, like back in the arcade days in Sungai Wang, all the way to to its resurgence when I was like, hey, I want to look for people to play with in 2008 and 9 in the arcades, meaning Zangief and Rose when she was available in the arcades. And what do you know it? There's actually a cool bunch of people who were doing all that, playing their hardest. And I get to learn that, yeah, the competitive spirit, all that is really awesome. It was a really good community. I mean, it still is. I mean, even when I step, stepped away from it, it's still doing very well, you know, with all the streams and the versus ages stuff going on. So keep that going. Keep that going, guys. Even Malaysia too, they're doing a great job following the influences from Singapore side and also doing their best. Even up to now, I still hang out with the Infinite Carnage guys and to an extent, the Malaysian fighting game guys to have fun, you know, play games and even fight with them online whenever I can. Uh, not as often as I can compared to 2008 back then, because now kind of running all this, this the show and everything, it's tough. And you got a day job to balance and all that and personal life stuff. But as a whole, I'd say without Street Fighter 4 and Yoshinori Ono's presence, production, know-how, and his perseverance in making fighting games great again, this with the best of intentions. Yeah, without all that, I don't think I would be where I am right now. And I wouldn't be in part, I wouldn't be part as, I wouldn't be as part, I need to cut that part. Without all that, I wouldn't be part of the fighting game community like from Singapore and Malaysia's side back then. And in an, an aspect now in spirit, were it not for Street Fighter 4 and Yoshinori Ono's push because without him, yeah, you wouldn't see me ramble on about fighting game music or fighting game stuff or even on the website, all that, you know, and my passion would have been lost, I would have just done something else. Like sure, it'll be more profitable if I do something else, but I wouldn't love it as much compared to video games and compared to fighting or even on a casual level fighting games. like. Hell, I'm actually at this, at this point in writing and writing and publishing this video, I kind of want to bring up the fact that yeah, I was actually testing out this game, Fantasy Strike, which recently went free to play. I'll buy the game later on in the week. I just got some stuff to clear. Uh, watch our YouTube page for all the cool stuff coming up. It's just that yeah, with stuff like that coming up, along with other fighting games like Skull Girls, all that yeah, the legacy has been preserved. Good stuff. And yeah, thanks a lot, Uno. You, you, it's been real. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for getting Street Fighter 4 out. And thank you for persevering. I will make sure to keep my copies of... I think I got it here. I'm not sure. My Rockman Battle and Chase is somewhere in the house and everything. Oh, man, I kind of wish in retrospect when it came down to one of the game starts and even South Asia Major or even that one time GameSpot organized that Street Fighter Cross Tekken Ferris Wheel stuff in Singapore for the community. Like that was what I pitched and proposed and with the team and everything and that that was really cool. You know, having him on board, interviewing him and have, and getting the community, you know, to visit him and, you know, have fun, play Street Fighter Cross Tekken with him and to an extent Street Fighter 4. It was really, really cool. So 
I set that building blocks, I set all that pathway and everything. And it was everyone else who did the good job carrying it on forward. So yeah, thanks a lot. Yoshinoro Ono, you demand. Peace out. Yeah.